You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Mind is a terrible thing to waste. Welcome to Enter Connected with your host, Dr. Rainer Gilmore. Psychiatrist Rainer Gilmore will explore the interconnectivity of the mind, body, soul, and spirit, and how they have an effect on each other within our internal and external worlds. So welcome the host of Enter Connected, Dr. Rainer Gilmore. Connected. We're on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I welcome you to enter on this journey with me as I explore the interconnectivity of the mind, body, soul, and spirit. When you enter this space, you will be connected to a wealth of information. You will also realize that we are more alike than we are different, so we should use that to lift each other up as opposed to tearing each other down. If anybody has any questions, the phone number to call in is 866-451-1451. Again, that is 866-451-1451. My name is Dr. Raina Gilmore. I am a board-certified psychiatrist that specializes in child and adolescent psychiatry. I am from Florida and currently practicing in Cincinnati, Ohio. So as we're ending up this month, I'm going to tell you what the days are, the awareness days. Today was Joe Day, Little Red Wagon Day, and Man- Mantle Appreciation Day, and Spanish Paella Day. Tomorrow is Black Forest Cake Day, Something on a Stick Day, and Weed Appreciation Day. Take that where you want it. I think they're talking about the weeds in the ground because the other weed day is in April. But I'm just saying, what you do on that day is your it's your business. The 29th is a very special day because that is my birthday. So just celebrate that. It's also Lemon Chiffon Cake Day, Mom and Pop Business Owners Day, Nevada Day, and Vietnam War Veterans Day. The 30th is Doctor's Day, I Am in Control Day, Pencil Day, Take a Walk in the Park Day, Turkey Neck Soup Day, and Virtual Vacation Day. The 31st is Bunsen Burner Day for you chemistry nerds out there, Clams on the Half Shell Day, Crayon Day, Prom Day, and Tater Day. On Monday, that starts April. So April 1st is, of course, April Fool's Day. Be careful with that. One Cent Day and Sourdough Bread Day. On Tuesday is Ferret Day, Peanut Butter and Jelly Day, Reconciliation Day, and SAAM Day of Action. SAAM stands for Sexual Assault Awareness Month. And next Wednesday, the 3rd, is Child Help, Child Help Day of Hope. Chocolate Moose Day, Find a Rainbow Day, Tweed Day, that's T-W-E-E-D, Walking Day, and World Party Day. Um, That's a Wednesday. It's also Hum Day, so there's that. The monthly observations for April are Canine Fitness Month, Child Abuse Awareness Month, Couple Appreciation Month, Humor Month, Lawn and Garden Month, Month of Hope, Month of the Military Child, Poetry Month, Stress Awareness Month, and Volunteer Month. I also would like to say that this month, March, was Social Work Appreci- Social Worker Appreciation Month. So I would like to appreciate all of those social workers out there. This evening, 
I have the pleasure of having special guest, attorney Danielle Lynch. So Danielle, or Danny as she likes to be called, Lynch has been teaching yoga since 2014 and has been an avid practitioner since 2002. She obtained her 200 and 500 hour teaching certifications at Red Hot Yoga in Atlanta, where she was trained in Lyinger style Hatha and power yoga. I hope I said that right. She taught at Red Hot Yoga for two years before leaving in 2016 to follow a less traditional route. Danny decided to follow her heart and desire to share yoga with those who have less access to classes by accepting a teaching position at local community centers in the metro Atlanta area. There, Danny taught beginner level courses to underserved youth and adults on a weekly basis. She finds joy in sharing the peace and healing that the practice can bring. Partnering with like minded organizations and studios allow her to further her passion for sharing the physical, spiritual, and mental benefits of the practice with populations that might not otherwise have access. She is enthusiastic about providing each student with an opportunity to go inward and experience meditative peace while increasing their physical strength, balance, and flexibility. So I welcome Miss Danielle Lynch to the show this evening. How are you doing this evening? I'm good. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to have you. This, 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 what you do, it just it embodies all of all of the, what this show talks about. So I feel like we're gonna have a good time. Um, awesome. Could you talk a little bit about your background and what led you to to gain an interest in the yoga? Well, yeah. So I originally started practicing yoga when I was in law school. Um, it was, as you can imagine, a stressful time. Uh, to Mm -hmm. say the least, and um, the school offered free yoga classes, so we took advantage of it, and I'd heard of it, but I'd never, you know, actually tried it until then, and I just found that it just really gave me a sense of peace. Um, It just, it it allowed me to, it it allowed me to remain active, while at the same time, just kind of let me, put me in a space where I was able to forget about the stress of the day. Um, I didn't really get too active in it. Um, Once I graduated, I started working, actually kind of fell off, as you would say, um, from the yoga, always remained active in some kind of way, but I kind of let yoga uh, go by the wayside. I didn't practice as frequently. And then in, what are we, 2019 now? So maybe in 20, right? Um, I know. (laughs) About seven years ago, my math's not good. About seven or eight years ago, I was diagnosed uh, with multiple sclerosis, and I um, my first relapse was pretty rough. I um, had difficulty walking. I had pain walking. I was told that I may never be able to walk normally again, and for somebody that grew up pretty active, um, that hit me pretty hard. Mm-hmm. Um, eventually, you know, I was, I was able to heal, got better, got back physical, but I was always looking for a... Um, a workout that would not just help me physically, but also, you know, kind of be a stress reliever. And I started doing some research and I started getting back into yoga. I found that yoga just benefits the body and the mind and the spirit. That's what I read. And then I started practicing and I got addicted. Um, The work as an attorney was very stressful. Um, So it helped me manage my stress at work, but it also helped me stay in shape and the more and more I practiced, the more I fell in love with it. And I realized I wanted, I, people needed to know about this. They needed to know, and I wanted to learn how to share it with them. And so that's what made me want to go ahead and be a teacher. Wow. That's a, that's a very inspiring story. You know, my sister, you know her very well. You all are good friends. Yeah. And um, she used to make me, you know, she could, make me do pretty much anything, you know, because I was pretty, you know, that's how my sister is. She's very influential. And um, so she would make me go to the yoga classes. And I remember she had me go to one. And I think it was probably like an advanced class or something. I don't know. But all I remember is that, for one, my stomach was hanging out of my 
my belly was hanging out and I fell out of place because I didn't see any other bellies hanging out. And then they were having like you put your leg all the way up to your thigh and mine wouldn't get past my calf. It was just it just didn't seem (sighs) therapeutic to me. And the lady was trying to correct my form. I was not having it. But I did like the part at the end where you just lay (laughs) and you meditate and just be quiet and be still. And yeah. that was my favorite part. All the downward dogs and catarangas and stuff. I was not really feeling them. But I will say that as I have gotten older and, and you know, just like law school, medical school is very stressful. Uh, just like law, medicine is very stressful. So right. being able to, you know, I found myself being very burnt out. I mean, extremely burnt out. And they always say, find that balance, 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 balance. Well, shut up, because it's hard to find it when you are being pulled in 50 different directions and taking care of others. So um, I have found that trying to find that balance in meditation and and just kind of self-reflection and things like that have really, really helped. So maybe you can help me as we move through the show, try and have a better appreciation for yoga. Okay. Cause my sister didn't, it's time for us to take a break. (laughs) I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore and you're listening to interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM global network and tune in radio. And when we come back, We are going to talk about mental health in yoga. We'll be right back. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 B.C. when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 B.C. to the time that men began achieving political power around 3,000 B.C. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. This is Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. If anybody has any questions, the phone number to call in is 866-451-1451. Again, that is 866-451-1451. This evening, I have special guest attorney, Danielle Lynch, and she is a yoga instructor. We're just talking about yoga and the, the benefits of it. So, Danielle, can you talk a little bit about, like, because I tried, I think I butchered the names of these different types of yoga styles and stuff. Can you just kind of talk about, like, the different styles of yoga and what each of them are supposed, not, I know there's a lot of them, but from what you know and, like, what they're supposed, what you do specifically and, you know, how it, how it um, affects you mentally, I guess. We can talk about mentally this segment. Okay. Um, just to quickly go through um, just some of the common ones that you hear. Like you mentioned um, that I practice and teach uh, Hatha Yoga and Power Yoga. Um, power Yoga is more of a vinyasa flow is another phrase that you'll hear or you might see on the schedule. And that's basically to, um, to briefly, just I guess put it, is where you're doing, you're flowing from one pose to another. Um, you're doing almost like a series of maybe going from some sun salutations, up dog, down dog, um, chaturangas, warrior one, you know, a crescent moon. I know I'm throwing these out there all within like one series of poses and then, you know, you'll start over. That's sort of what a vinyasa flow might look like and it's not necessarily in that order. Um, half the yoga is more focused on the breathing and the holding of the posture. Um, there's hot yoga, there's Bikram yoga. Um, hot yoga sort of a, is a spinoff from Bikram. Bikram um, actually had a certain set of poses that they actually did, and hot yoga sort of integrated some additional poses into it, and they don't follow the rules as strict. There's 
laughing yoga you and I were talking about these days. There's um, mm-hmm. there's naked yoga. You know, there's partner yoga. Yes, so. naked yoga. Yes, <laughs> I, was just, I was just looking that up. Um, there is one yes. in Columbus. Yeah, mm-hmm. I might try and figure how to out how to get to that one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yoga has actually become very westernized, um, and, but. The um, most common ones I think that you'll find is um, probably Ashtangas, again, another series of poses that are sort of um, or a way of flowing through the Ashtanga practice. practice. Um, they're just, they just vary a little bit, but all of the poses are under the umbrella of, you know, yoga. Like there's not a pose that you'll do in Ashtanga that you won't do, and there's not a same, the same name for it in a Hatha yoga class. I hope I'm, um, if that makes sense. Um, but one thing I wanted to address too, though, is you talked about, um, just for your listeners, you talked about your experience going in the class and how the teacher, you know, it sounds like just maybe didn't fit your needs. And I just mm-hmm. want to encourage everyone. It's almost like going to a mosque or a church or, you know, even just a, a fitness class, right? You're going to have teachers that you love and you want to go back and they, they just seem like they just fit you and they give you what you need. And then you're going to have teachers that you're like, what in the heck? I normally love Zumba. Who is this person? She doesn't even know the moves. I don't like her right. music. But I would, yeah, right? So I, I would encourage you to just give it another try because you just want to find the right teacher. And, and we're all human. Um, and I sit in class sometimes when I might mess up a word or forget something. I'm like, sorry, it's just yoga. You know, because we're, we're all human too. And we all have our different personalities and everything. So I, I, would, I want you guys, if you decide to try it or you have, you didn't have a good experience, maybe try it a couple more times because I'm sure you'll find the right fit. And then I don't think it was the Vasa. teacher. I don't think it was a teacher, though. I think it was just me. (laughs) Well, no, no, I think it was me because I, you know, first of all, like I think, like I said, I think we didn't realize it was like a a more advanced yoga class. And so I hadn't really been to a yoga class. So I think that was part of it. So I just felt like I didn't fit, you know, Um, so the teacher was fine. Like I didn't, you know, I was just a little salty because it was because I was it was my own. It was me, not them, you know. Gotcha, 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 yeah. Yeah. But um, but yeah, so just try just try different kinds. Maybe call a studio or ask the teacher. You know, let them know that you're new, and ask them where you should stand. And that way, that they'll they'll know to maybe just look out for you and give you what's called modifications, different ways of doing things in case you can't do it like the rest of the class. You're not there yet. Um, yes, yeah, I modified but, it on my own. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody this is not it's not <laughs> you figured it out. Yeah. Yep. But um, to go to the sh- Shavasana to take us into the mental health, too, um, Shavasana is actually, that's the last pose that people don't know where you're actually laying down and you're practicing stillness. And it's actually one of the most difficult poses for a lot of oh. people, um, especially in Western society, because we're so used to having to do something. And mm-hmm. especially if you're somebody who's not used to relaxing and you're coming to yoga, I and mean, even if it's your first class, you're trying to do what everybody else is doing and you're focused and your mind is going, you're trying to keep your leg up, all this other stuff. And then they just want you to be still. And then oh, as you're I love still, it. you're thinking like, yeah, you know, as you're still, you're like, you know, what time is it? And you're like, I got to do this later. I got to do And you, in Shavasana, you're supposed mm-hmm. to let it all go. And so that, yes. that's actually one of the most beneficial, but one of the most difficult poses for a lot of people, but it's actually very good for your mental health and for your um, mindfulness, um, just to sort of take us into that. Do they have classes where you just do that the whole time? No, no. but they do okay. have um, classes. Well, they have classes where they're meditation classes. There's a studio here in Atlanta that I love, um, mm-hmm. and they, they their whole theme is, they're called Snake and Trip sacred chill but their whole theme is um basically almost like a slower paced um meditative practice so they don't offer the fast vinyasa flow um or anything and they have meditation classes and you basically they they put you in a meditative state and you just relax and you're comfortable and you're there for like 45 minutes and meditation is is a part of yoga so (laughs) it is okay so yeah. I feel like I'm do because I meditate every day. So I feel like I'm oh, doing yeah. some yoga then because that yeah, other, yeah, I'm not, you know, you are. So go, let me let me say that real quick too. There's eight limbs of yoga, um, and 
the asana is the physical practice. That's Sanskrit. Um, that's the physical practice. That's what everybody sees, but that literally is just one part. Breathing is a part of yoga. Meditation is a part of yoga. Focus is a part of yoga. So there's there's eight different limbs to it. So you are you are practicing yoga every day if you're meditating. Okay, that makes me feel better. Thank you, Danielle. Good. Thank you. <laughs> And are you, um, a question from a listener, um, are you still practicing law? I am. Um, what's interesting, though, is that I've been practicing law since '04, but um, I uh, am looking to transition out of law and do something full-time with yoga and wellness. I have my master's in conflict management as well. Um, mm, okay. And so... I'm looking to sort of do something that sort of combines the whole wellness and and self-awareness now and sort of step away from the law. But I am still a lawyer right now. Okay. Okay. Um, so you're, you're going to like completely phase out of law, you think? So I, I work really hard for it. So I will probably always keep my license active. Okay. Um, and I may volunteer here and there, but that's not, I'm a, um, um, that's not where my, my, my heart lies in like helping people. And, and I found that I feel like I can be more effective doing it. This okay. Way. Got you. Yeah. Got you. Yeah. Well, it's time for us to take a break. I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore, and you're listening to Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And when we come back, we are going to continue to talk about the benefits of yoga. Stay tuned. Essential Nutrients LLC is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. You are listening to Interconnected, and I'm your host, Dr. Raina Gilmore. We're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. If anybody has any questions, the phone number to call in is 866-451-1451. Again, that is 866-451-1451. This evening, I have special guest attorney, Danielle Lynch, and she is a yoga instructor. And we're talking about the benefits the benefits of yoga, both for your mind, body, spirit, soul, all of that. So you mentioned that you, you know, you talked about your journey with multiple sclerosis and, you know, how devastating that was and how hard that was for you physically. Can you talk about how specifically the yoga helped you physically and some other physical um, or medical, you know, or physical benefits that yoga can have? Sure. So one of the things that I love about the yoga is that it it literally is a practice that can benefit you physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and it, it's it's um and it's been doing it's about five that over five thousand years old actually. So like you know it, it it's been proven that that yoga has all these benefits. So one of the things about having a condition or being diagnosed with a condition like um, MS where it impacts you physically is it also impacts you mentally, right? Like most, most, um, you know, conditions that manifest physically, they can have an impact on someone's daily life. We can have, which can have an impact on their emotions. It can cause depression. It can have impact on your confidence. It can cause fear. So one of the things about the yoga and the reason that I chose to to really dive into it and why I feel like it helped me so much is it wasn't just that it helped me physically. It really helped me manage my emotions and it helped boost my confidence in my body's ability to do things. Because with MS, it's, you know, going from somebody that 
you know, was was told they weren't sure you're ever going to be able to walk again without pain. And now I can, you know, stand on my head. I can stand on one leg with my other head, leg in my hand in the air, you know, mm-hmm. and it just, it, it shows me how strong the mind is because so much of that is mental and focused, but also how strong my body is. Um, and so that, those are some of the ways that it actually impacted me personally. One of the other things that I love about the yoga though, is that every pose, and if you look it up, mm-hmm. every pose has, um, physical benefits, like externally, you know, you look at um, downward dog and it can, um, you know, increases your thigh muscles, you know, increases, um, you know, strengthens your back muscles, you know, tightens your core. But at the same token, you know, it massages your kidneys, you know, like there's, there's oh, certain okay. glands that each pose. Oh, yeah. Every pose does something internally with your organs and your glands, like a simple twist. You know, you do a twist at the beginning or in the middle of class, you know, from one side to the other. Twists are great for your spine and your organs, right? Because what they do is they actually bring all the blood to that one area while you're in the twist. And when you release it, it brings fresh blood, fresh nutrients to those, um, to those areas, to your spine, oh, okay. to your organs. Yeah, so that's one of the, the ways. Like it's not, it doesn't just make you help you with balance. It does, but it's not just that. It's not just flexibility, and it's not just strength and toning. It does all those things, but there's also the internal benefits, like I said, to the spleen and things like that, that each of these poses does in their own different way. Are there any, like, particular um, websites or um, references you have for people to uh, read about, you know, both the internal and external benefits of the different poses? So I'll say, um, I, like, Yoga Journal is a good one for people that are starting. Um, Google is good for everything, right? Um, yeah. There's, there's <laughs> yoga is so, pop, right? it's, you know, so popular um, right now, um, which is a beautiful thing. But so there's tons of information online if you look. But Yoga Journal is a, a good go-to. Um, there's tons of books. I love Light on Yoga by BKS Iyengar. Iyengar, but you think you said um I don't think you should pronounce it differently, but yeah, it is a younger. Um, and I adore him and I love his book. Um, he's passed away recently, but that's like the yoga Bible. Um, and that outlines all the different poses. I wouldn't recommend it for a beginner, but somebody, okay. cause it's just so deep. If you want to, you can, but it, there's books that are a lot more user friendly for a beginner. But if you're somebody that's really into the practice and you really want to get understand like what a pose does, how to properly do it, all those things, and what it benefits, um, it's you know I would bet, say light on yoga is a great one. Again, it's, it's pretty thick; it's about 500 pages long. But um, yeah, you said light on yoga. Yeah, L I G H T. Okay. On yoga, and it's B K S I Y E N G A R. I Y E N G A R. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm always looking for for resources. What about any apps? Do you know of any apps that people could use? Because you know, people are very so, app friendly so these days, ton, right? And there's a ton of apps. So this is where my lawyer hat goes on. I'm not going to recommend apps because I don't use them and I would hate to get recommended an app and somebody got injured and tried to sue you or me. Oh, um, okay. So, so, so yep. I always wear both That's hats, the lawyer right? coming out. That's um, the lawyer coming right, out. Right, yeah. that lawyer comes out. She comes yeah. out sometimes. But because I've not tried any either, I don't want to recommend any and steer anyone wrong. I've heard of some, but I've not personally tried apps. Okay. So the, so the yoga journal is something that you actually would order, right? No, the Yoga Journal is a website. They, they, they oh, have website. magazines, okay. actually, that come out. But, yeah, the Yoga Journal is a website that I would recommend that people go on to, to, to get a good understanding of some of the basic stuff. That's a pretty um, reputable and, and common one. Okay. And light and on one yoga. one thing I want to – and light on yoga, yeah. One thing yeah. I want to encourage um, your, your listeners, too, if they haven't tried it. Some people say to me, you know, I can't go to yoga. I'm not flexible. Um, and that's why you go. Right. You go so that you can become flexible. Everybody in class is not going to be flexible. Um, Even if you're in advanced class, there's going to be poses people can't do. And there was a point in their life when they couldn't do them at all. So you just happen to catch them when they can do it. But every that yoga is about acceptance and accepting yourself for where you are. So I don't want anyone to feel like they can't go or they would feel, you know, um, people would judge them because that's not what yoga is. It, It should be accepting and it should be welcoming. So I say give it a try. Okay. 
It's time yeah. for us to take a break. Uh, thank you for that. I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore, and you're listening to Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And when we come back, I have been bombarded with lots of questions, so I'm going to ask some questions about yoga. Stay tuned. Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst to the realization of your dreams by making them a reality. Based in Quebec, Canada, Joanne is also a space coach using social media and Skype to work with anyone, anywhere around the world. Contact Joanne Charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca 819-360-3266 Now is your time. My Dreams, My Challenges, and Joys is an inspiring book by author Linda Genazzo. This real-life account of raising a child with autism from birth to adulthood takes you on a journey of compassion, love, and hope as it tells the incredible story of a devoted family and their beloved daughter. Together, they faced adversity and never stopped believing they would find the help they were seeking. A breast cancer survivor, Linda Genazzo has a giving heart. With a background in social work with the mentally ill and the homeless, Linda continues to help families in her community. And her book, My Dreams, My Challenges and Joys, brings greater awareness to autism and those families in need. To purchase your copy, visit www.lindagenazzo.com. It's also available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. Don't delay. Get your copy today. Hello, welcome everyone. I'm your host, Dr. Raina Gilmore, and this is Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. If anybody has any questions, the phone number to call in is 866-451-1451. Again, that is 866-451-1451. This evening, I have the pleasure of having special guest, Danielle Lynch, who is a yoga instructor. and We're talking about the benefits of yoga. So I'm just going to go down the list of questions. I got a whole bunch of questions from listeners. So <clears throat> first question is, let's see, which one do I want to start with? Hmm. What strategies would you suggest to get vulnerable populations to see the benefits of yoga? Um, I would suggest inviting them, exposing them um, in the sense of like I go, I, that's one of the reasons I started teaching at community centers. So, so free events work um, because, mm-hmm. you know, you know, you don't have to spend any money and no, and people, you may already be skeptical about it anyway. So it's like, if, if it's just a matter of coming out, I'm sure I'll come, you know, um, going to where they are. Um, like I said, community centers, um, going to prisons, going to jails, um, going to nursing homes and offering yoga there, um, starting with the basics. You know, just showing them that there's nothing to be afraid of. I, my experience um, is that when you show people how easy it is and how helpful it is to just be calm, and it can be something as simple as a pose where you put your legs up a wall and your back is lying flat on the, um, on the floor, on the mat. You know, so many of my students in, uh, that are new to yoga, um, especially my elderly students, that's one of their favorite poses. And it's, mm-hmm. it, there's so many benefits to it, right? Um, there mm-hmm. literally are going upside down um, and just physical benefits and emotional. But, you know, just letting them know that yoga is not always standing on your hands or, or something like that. I think that's mm-hmm. one of the ways of sort of ex- like exposing them. 
And you know, it's interesting. I've I've, I've been reading some things about you know, like in this within the school system because you know I work with kids, um, and how when kids are acting out or whatever, they there's a lot of people who do like the timeout and the restraints and things like that. But there's some there's a school of thought. Um, I think that some schools are trying to do that. It's more kind of sensory meditative based for like when a kid is yeah. acting out to have them meditate or or introducing yoga or even like with sports you know a lot of uh, people don't know that a lot of athletes do yoga you know because it helps Mm -hmm. them um it with their performance and um you know I try to say things like this to these kids and they look at me like I'm crazy you know and I am crazy but that's not that's besides the point I, I you know I try to tell them that no there's actually athletes like professional athletes that do yoga or they're even doing it you know my nephew talks about going to yoga you know and he's in high school so um there's definitely a lot of benefits I mean just hearing you talk about it and you obviously know what you're talking about it's not like you're just one of those quacks um <clears throat> there's so many benefits and that that even makes me want to you know Keisha if you're listening I may go to another class with you okay I know you're <laughs> going to hold me to that but you know it makes me want to just kind of read up on the different um benefits it could have you know physically um as well as mentally um and maybe try it out again so another question yeah, is so- oh go ahead go ahead no go ahead Oh, I was going to say that's something that I actually enjoy is teaching um, kids. And that's something I want definitely want to do more of because there are uh, tons of studies out there that show that mindfulness and stillness and meditation um, actually do help improve their behavior. Um, mm-hmm. And also I did use, it was interesting. I would have in my community center when I would teach one in particular, I literally have like, you know, maybe a 71 year old woman and right next to her, like two two teenagers from the basketball team, you know, and they love it right, too, right. you know? And so right. yeah, they, they, they love it. Yeah. Yeah. Very diverse. Yeah, I'm sure you see a, a diverse population. So that's, that's good. Yeah. Um, and it brings people together too, I guess, you know what I'm saying? Like you, people that you wouldn't think would be in the same room together, you know? Absolutely. Um, so it's a whole somewhat communal as well. Uh, another question is, which yoga do you suggest for a beginner that is looking for alternative pain management or rehab, such as like lower back or core strength? So I would recommend starting with um, half the yoga. If you look at it, if you... If you want a particular name, I wouldn't go into a power vinyasa. I don't even know if I would go into heated, though I do love the hot yoga, and it is good for benefit um, for beginners. Um, But just a hot yoga class, what I would do is if there's a studio that that is near you that you're thinking of checking out, I would ask them what is their level one beginner class. I would also always let the teacher know um, or the person checking you in, tell them to tell the teacher so you don't have to say it out loud, what injuries you may have, what tightness. Area, tight areas you may have, um, even if it's something as high blood pressure, can be impacted by certain poses. So you want to make okay. sure that when you're new to a studio, when you're new to a teacher, you let them know um, if you're pregnant, something like that, uh, so that they can give you modifications that the, so that the pose won't cause any um, additional injury or contradictions or anything like that. Um, so I did, did I answer your question? Yeah. Beginner yeah. class. Well, yeah, hopefully. I was trying to remember the question. Went yeah, off that was a, a bit, question. Yeah. yeah, no, no, I think that I think that was helpful. Is there a certain amount of hours that you suggest uh, a new person practice yoga? Um, as, as many times as much as they can. Um, I would say maybe um, if you could, if because life is busy, right, and you don't want yoga. Mm-hmm. Yoga's not supposed to be stressful, right? So you don't want right. to. I don't want to say like you know three, four times a week, and then all of a sudden you're stressed because you're not practicing your yoga three, four times a week. So I would say right. when you can. Um, if it's 15 minutes a day in the morning, like you said, meditating is an easy bit of yoga, doing a couple of poses at home. Um, if you can do it two, three times a week, that's great. Um, but like once a week, is great. If that's all you can squeeze in, um, start there. Like I said, or even just 20 minutes at home, maybe before you go to bed, you can look online and find certain poses that are good to help put you to sleep or good poses, do some sun salutations in the morning to help wake you up, maybe do 20 of those. Just get it in where you can, but don't make it something that's another thing for you to stress about because that defeats the whole purpose. Definitely. We do not want, we're trying to decrease stress here. We're not trying to right. increase stress. We're trying to decrease it. So 
That's that's right. very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. It's time for us to take a break. I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore, and you're listening to Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And when we come back, we're going to talk about mindfulness and yoga. We'll be right back. Jenny Friend is a licensed marriage and family therapist and a certified clinical sexologist, commonly known as a sex therapist, with over 30 years of experience in the field of sexuality. She's been a researcher and teacher and is further trained in human development over the lifespan. She's also a published author and a radio personality. Her specialized training in lifespan developments means she can help individuals, couples, and families through difficult developmental phases. Her primary ways of working are through the tools of cognitive, behavioral, and psychoenergetics theories and techniques. Couples, individual men and women, and families are also welcome. She can meet in her office in Costa Mesa, California, or on the Internet through Skype at Jenny Friend MFT. Call 714-210-9200. You can also send an email from her website at www.centerforclarity.org. That phone number again is 714-210-9200. You're listening to Interconnected, and I'm your host, Dr. Raina Gilmore. We're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. This evening, I have the very pleasurable experience of having special guest, Danielle Lynch, who is a yoga instructor, and we're talking about the many benefits of yoga. So I am going to read a inspirational message and then we'll talk a little bit more about mindfulness and yoga the inspirational message this is by jacob held and it says we can't escape pain we can't escape the essential nature of our lives but we do have a choice we can give in and relent or we can fight persevere and create a life worth living a noble life pain is a fact Our evaluation of it is a choice. And I think this is pretty relevant, just with what we're talking about with the the benefits of yoga. And so how we, you know, pain is going to be there, you know, whether it's emotional pain or physical pain or spiritual pain. And we can either just sulk in it and allow it to define us and take over us, or we can find ways to be able to cope with it. And I think yoga is a very good way to cope with many different types of pain. So, um, there's a war with questions, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you another question. Um, have you gotten any of your family members involved in yoga? Yeah. Um, so they come. <laughs> I'm thinking of laughing particularly at my mom and dad. Um, they come and they're <laughs> like, oh, I'm going to start coming. I'm going to start coming. And then I haven't seen them in I don't know how long. And they'll be like, you know, oh, babe, when do you teach? And I'm like, same time I always teach. <laughs> like, same mm-hmm. thing. Right. <laughs> and like, Has a change. Come, come. Right. Um, so that, that's kind of where it's at with my family. And what where the most that I'm able to do with them is when they are going through something where they do have pain is I'll do stretches with them then or I'll do some breathing activities with them then. But I haven't been able to get them into going regularly. It's Okay. You just yeah. make those other make those other people your family, so that's fine. <laughs> they are. <laughs> My family asks me stuff all the time, and I give them, you know, suggestions and stuff like that. Now, whether they listen to them or not, that's you know. Right. <sighs> Another question is. Right. Um. Okay, this is silly. Do are do they have specific classes? Actually, I want to know this too for fat and inflexible people. I know. So what I'll say, no. So so it's so it's America, right? Um, yes. We do with cells a lot of times, right? So that's not traditionally a way yoga yoga should work. But neither is naked yoga, neither neither is goat yoga, neither is dog yoga. Like that's not five ten thousand year old practice that talks about focusing on yourself and helping you feel better and all of that. It wouldn't be called that. Um, so, but there may, there are likely somewhere classes and that may be a new thing that pops up on Instagram that's aimed at that. But I would not, we're all, we're all, we're all one. You know what I mean? Like I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't, yeah. Like we're, we're all 
struggling with stuff on our own different levels and we're all beginners in something in our lives and we were all beginners at some point in our lives and I like the idea of everybody coming together to practice together and and the acceptance and the love that the students feel when they say namaste towards each other at the end of class to somebody that looks totally different from them that they all made it through together Mm -hmm. that helps you feel like I'm not alone Mm -hmm. Um, but there there may be so I don't I haven't heard of it though (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I like I like that you say that because, you know, we are pretty self-conscious, a uh, self-conscious because that's how Americanized, Westernized society teaches us to be, you know. Yeah. And so um, it, it kind of makes me think about, um, you know, in Atlanta, they have that Jeju place where. Uh, I love Jeju. <laughs> yeah, where you, yeah, okay. I remember my first experience with that. Of course, again, it was my sister, and mm-hmm. um, you know, I remember her saying, "Oh, it's you know, it's just relaxing and everything." And I was like, "Oh, cool, cool, cool." And then she said, "But you know, the only thing is that you, you know, you have to be naked." I said, "Excuse me, what?" And so. <laughs> I got there and, you know, first I was a little squeamish because I was because, you know, just you just get self-conscious. But then like and then you walk in there and it's just, you know, so much naked women walking around. Then once you like get in it and then it's like, who cares? Like, you know, it's just it's like liberating. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I was yeah, I like I was dancing naked in the bathroom the other day and it was so liberating, you know, because I'm just like, this is (laughs) is just so liberating and I'm exercising because I don't. And so that really it's really liberating. So I think we need to be be, like accept ourselves better. And I think when you're that's why I, I like, you know, your classes where you have, you know, diverse people within the classes. So, um Gosh, more questions. Um, what is the difference between Pilates and yoga? So I'm going to be honest and say I, I'm not as familiar with Pilates. I do know that the way Pilates got started is because um, I forget his first name, but I know his last name. I think it's Pilates. Um, Pilates or something. <laughs> but um, I do know that it was because he was it, like he was not even basically paralyzed. Like he was not able to get up and physically work out. And so that's why Pilates, most of the work is done on the mat. Um, okay. I, to my understanding, Pilates is there is self-awareness that's a part of it, but it's not like yoga. The asana, the physical practice is actually the smaller part of the yoga. Like I tell my students all the time, like, you know, don't force yourself into a pose. When I say go deeper, it may not mean go deeper into a forward fold, but it may mean go deeper inward. And I'd rather oh, you go okay. deeper inward than go deeper into a pose. And so oh, okay. I think that's one of the major differences, but I'm not as familiar with Pilates to be able to dig into that too much. What about the yoga with animals, like dogs and goats and stuff like that? What do you think about that? I think it's a bit strange, but that's just me. Right. So I try to be open, right? But um, I've never tried it. Mm -hmm. Um, I've seen comments online where people say they loved it. It's fun. So I don't want to take away from that. But one of the big parts of yoga is, again, going inward like to me my mat those four corners of my mat and I I would like to say the same for my students I hope I give them that space that's my safe space that's Mm -hmm, where it's mm -hmm. just me yeah there's a teacher there and there's somebody next to me but when I'm on that mat that's me and my time and if I I love dogs but if I have my puppy next to me I can't focus on me so I'm not trying to say that in a judgmental way because I've never done it and there may be a way to do it and still get what you need from the yoga but that just would be one of my concerns is how can I possibly make this my time when I'm worried about the the goat or the animal next to me. It's, it's different if you're even doing partner yoga or yoga with it with your child or something because you're sharing that space mm-hmm. with a like-minded person that you can communicate with. Um, but I don't know. I'm not. I'm yeah. Not. <laughs> yeah. And I-, I love dogs. I love animals. Yeah, that doesn't mean you don't love dogs. It's okay. It's fine. Yeah, I love, I love puppies. Yeah, I love yeah. kids, too, but sometimes <laughs> I don't want to be around them. It's time for us to take a break. <laughs> I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore, and you're listening to Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And when we come back, we are going to wrap up. Stay tuned. 
Global Glory. That's the work of Dr. Marina McLean, COO of Global Glory, whose calling is to serve God. A first-generation British-born Londoner of Jamaican descent, Dr. McLean inherited the hunger for the Word from her father, who was a Bible teacher. Growing up, her home was filled with missionaries from the Caribbean islands and America, and she travels the world preaching the gospel. She has a Bachelor of Arts degree in theology and an honorary doctorate of divinity and Christian counseling from Friends International Christian University. Dr. McLean is also a songwriter and recording artist, and her songs are written during summits and conferences in the presence of God. She's recorded three worship albums to date and is in ministry for 28 years alongside her husband, Dr. Rennie McLean, who shares her passion. Visit www.globalglory.org or on Facebook at Global Glory. Call 866-244-5679 and feel the glory. You are listening to Interconnected, and I'm your host, Dr. Raina Gilmore. We're on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio. This evening, I've had the pleasure of having special guest Danielle Lynch, who is a yoga instructor and attorney. And we have been talking about the benefits of yoga. So um, I want to give you a chance to wrap up and, and, you know, talk about any special projects you're doing or or anything or any um, resources you have. But I did have another question. Um, What should a man wear to his first yoga class? If it's the naked um, yoga, that's nothing. But other than the naked yoga, right, right. Well, the naked yoga, yeah, that tells you um, something comfortable and and loose, something he feels comfortable in, and he can stretch in. Like most of the men that come to my yoga classes, granted, I teach hot for the most part, but they will usually wear maybe like um, shorts, basketball shorts, something okay. loose fitted. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. And what just what are some some key things you want uh, for people to know uh, from our discussion this evening? Oh, key things. Um, well, I've already just I guess hopefully just to encourage people to just give it a try. And if you tried before and you didn't have a good experience, give it another one. Um, also, just to to recognize that yoga is more about just stillness. And in the self-awareness aspect of it, you know, I tell my students all the time, um, what I love is when it, when you are on your mat and you're able to just kind of recognize you're, you're going in and you're, you're not focusing on anyone else, you learn a lot about yourself. And I'll tell my students, like, you know, you bring your life to your mat, right? So if you're on your mat and you're frustrated and you're annoyed and you're agitated and you're wondering how long this pose is going to last and why is the person next to me breathing so hard and all this other stuff, well, you need to look at maybe how you handle life. Like, are you that way Uh in life right now? Are you mad at everything? Like, you bring who you are and you bring who you are everywhere. But the cool thing about, the good thing about yoga and the cool thing is you don't have many distractions there. So you are faced with yourself. Where mm-hmm. you're irritated about things on the outside world and the road and you're, you know, you're annoyed with people at your job and then you're annoyed with people in the grocery store and everything else. And you can blame that on everybody else. But when you're in that class and you're on that mat, you're annoyed at everything. Yeah, maybe you don't like the teacher, but after a while, what's going on with you? Like, right. you know, it kind of makes you come face to face with yourself and, and not necessarily in a bad way. You don't even have to communicate that with anyone, but it gives you a chance to sort of recognize for yourself what's happening. Um, so that's one of the things that I love about the practice as well. It just, and, and we didn't get a chance to really talk and I don't know how much more time I have. We didn't get a chance to really talk about just the breathing. Um, okay. I do want to just, yeah, talk about just the benefits of the breath work. Um, you know, if you, if you notice that, you know, your breath will tell you how you feel about life and you're excited, your breath is short, it's quick, it's fast, right? When mm-hmm. you're calm or, you know, it's, it's, it's you're, you know, it's deep inhales and exhales and you're very relaxed, you know? So if you find yourself, you know, just to h- sort of help you regulate that, your breath and regulate your moods a little bit, I wanted to give this to everybody to take with them. Like if you find yourself just stressed about something, angry about something or whatever, take a minute, maybe put your hands on your chest maybe over your heart and just do maybe like 20 seconds, 30 seconds of deep, slow inhales and exhales. And just really just focus only on your lungs filling up and then the exhale of releasing the air and just try to give yourself 
30 seconds, a minute or two of doing that and see how it is able to help you calm down and bring you back from whatever's got you frustrated, even if it's just a little while. Um, and that's one of the benefits of yoga. You know, we talked about the physical practice, the asana, the meditation, the self-awareness. And I wanted to make sure we talked about how the breath work can help you focus and help help you calm your nerve waves your, um, in your brain. There are studies that show, you know, how meditating and breathing can help calm your brain. So mm-hmm. tons of Absolutely. benefits to this thing. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, you know, like when you get exasperated or, or really upset with somebody and you do that deep breath anyway, because you just, you know, so upset. So, you I mean, why ready. don't you just, right, make that a practice, you know, yeah. and and make it yeah. therapeutic instead of like, you know, sucking your teeth and doing the, the deep breath before you cut somebody out or whatever. Because when, when you do it, what you're calling that deep breath before you cut somebody out is actually probably more shallow than it is deep. It's mm-hmm, just maybe mm-hmm. a little longer, like, but it's not like, it's not necessarily filling up your lungs and there's a difference in that too. So it's just, it, it, it's just, it's something that allows you again to tone, to get flexible, to do all these cool things you see people doing one day, maybe you'll be able to do it. Maybe not who knows you, right. It helps you get stronger because you're actually doing resistance training with your own body, your own body weight. But even more than that, it helps you learn how to regulate yourself. Mm-hmm. And Which is very important. Yes, honey. If more of us in this world learn how to just stop worrying about everybody else, if we all regulated our damn selves, mm-hmm. like, all right now, we would be a lot more. We would probably be a better society, a lot more welcoming, a lot more kind, a lot less judgmental. You know, we mm-hmm. all worried about how to be the best us we can be. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so. Yep, and now my sister's going to make me go, oh, see, now she wants to do the nude yoga class. I knew it. (laughs) You guys can have that. I wouldn't be able to focus. There's my deep breath. Right. God. Well, I'll, I'll try the nude yoga class, and I'll let everybody know how that goes. Uh, thanks, do. thank you, <laughs> thank you, everyone, for entering this journey of the mind, body, and spirit with me. I hope everyone has a great week, and please stay connected. Take care. You've been listening to Interconnected with Dr. Raina Gilmore. Join the conversation each week as Dr. Raina explores the mind, body, soul, and spirit connection. Take a journey that will lead you to a path of healing, learning, and how to cultivate and manage your life. Here on Dr. Raina's Interconnected. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.